Hello students, I welcome you all to the Learning Management System, an initiative by the Department of Collegiate and Technical Education. We are at session 45, where we are going to discuss unit 6, it is basics of transmission and distribution for the course basics of electrical power system 20 ee 11 t for the stu first semester students of diploma in electrical and electronics engineering at the end of this session the student will be able to draw the single line diagram of the layout of a 6 kv by 11 kv substation identify the various components and know the function of each component before we start the session 45 let us have a brief recap of session 44 in session 44 we studied about substation and the function of substation we studied about receiving station and also we classified substation based on service requirement and based on construction so based on service requirement we had transformer substation switching substation power factor correction substation frequency changing substation converting substation and industrial substation this was for individual industrial consumer this substation would convert ac to dc this would change the frequency this would work upon the improvement of power factor this is for switching purposes and this would change the voltage level based on constructional features we had four subdivisions that is indoor substation which was in installed indoors for voltages below 66 kV beyond 66 kV we installed the substation outdoors when there was a lack of space or there was a high rise building cost of land was high we went into underground substation and most popularly used substation as a distribution substation is pole mounted for convenience and saving on cost. Let us have an overview of what we are going to study in session 45. We are going to study the single line diagram of a 66 by 11 kV substation. We are going to study or learn the symbols of various components used in substation and we will learn the function of components used in substation. In this session, we are going to learn to draw a layout diagram or the single line diagram of a 66 kV by 11 kV substations. So to draw a layout diagram, we should understand what is a line diagram. So we have shown a simple line diagram where we have a source at one end and we have load at the other end. The source supplies electrical power while the load consumes electrical power. Between the source and the load, we have many components in the substation. All this substation cannot be represented by a figure. So we use graphical symbols to uh, represent various components. So in case you want to draw a line diagram, you know, need to know all the simple symbols of all the components used in a substation. So a single line diagram is basically a representation of the power system using simple symbols for each component. It shows the main connections and arrangements of system components along with their data. The data will be the rating, the voltage, resistance, reactance, etc. So here we have many a components which have been graphically represented. So in this session, we are going to study all the components and what is the graphical symbol for each of this component so that we can draw a single line diagram. Let us learn 
about the different components of a substation, their graphical symbol and their function. So that once we have learned all the components and the symbol, we are able to draw the layout diagram and understand the layout or the line diagram well. So the components of a substation are a power transformer or a distribution transformer so that we can change the voltage level. Then we have circuit breakers. We have disconnecting switches or isolators. We have bus bars. We have current transformers, potential transformers, lightning arresters, protective relays, battery, station batteries, and earthing system and a capacitor bank. So many components you will find in a substation and we will have to use these components when we draw the line diagram. Some of these equipments may not be compulsorily provided in the line diagram because they have to be considered as auxiliary system. The first component is the power transformer. The power transformer is provided in the substation and the type of transformer depends upon the type of substation. So power transformer may step up the voltage for transmission at the generating station. So whichever substation is at the generating station will always step up the voltage. For distribution substation, it will be always stepping down the voltage. So power transformer has a function of stepping up or stepping down. Graphically, you will find that transformers are represented by either this symbol or this symbol while drawing a layout diagram. This picture represents how a power transformer looks. Next, we have a circuit breaker. The name itself says circuit breaker. That means it breaks the circuit. The function of a circuit breaker is to automatically cut off the supply of the system during a fault or a short circuit condition. So circuit breaker will operate under load condition when load current is flowing and will operate only when a fault has occurred. So the job of the circuit breaker is to detect and isolate the fault as soon as possible so that the damage doesn't spread to the power system. So circuit breakers are designed to stop or interrupt very high fault currents. And this fault current may be more than 10 times. So as to high current on a stop mark, there will be sparking or arcing, we can say. Now, what do you A spark on a quench mark, arc quenching medium provide mark. So there are different type of circuit breaker depending upon what is the extent yawa value current interrupt matri adra mele tumba type of circuit breakers untu matra layout diagram alli namge beku oil circuit breaker idu circuit idu symbol air circuit breaker when you have air blast circuit breakers so there are different type of circuit breaker depending upon yawa medium on use matade so basically yen aagutade circuit breaker li contact open aagutade can you see here fixed contact and moving contact fault aguvaga moving contact open aagbeku avaga aa quenching medium irutade here i have shown a oil circuit breaker so there are different type of circuit breaker all you need to remember is that circuit breaker they work automatically yavaga operate aagutade fault aguvaga circuit breaker kelsa yenu cut off the power supply so fault current anu interrupt maadbeku the next component is the disconnecting switches or isolate isolate mean maadudu separate maadudu so what is the function of isolator 
when current is not flowing they carry no current avaga isolation ige separate lines anu separate madlike isolators anu use martive isolator ige no load switch sa heltare yavaga load current flow agudilla avaga matra isolator operate agudu unlike the circuit breaker circuit breaker load current flow agavaga operate agutade while isolators will operate when there is no load current so current illadidre arc quenching medium beka agatyave illa so circuit breaker alli arc quenching medium beku so isolator alli arc quenching medium beda adakke breaking value illa so circuit breaker ige ondu rating irutade ishtu amps ishtu amps annu safely interrupt maadabodu so isolator ige current flow agudilla it operate in a no load condition so it has got no making value or breaking value so in the figure we can see graphical symbols or different types of isolating switches either a single break or there is a double break isolator so you will find this in the layout diagram this is how an isolator looks like this is the movable part which can be open you have to remove it and move it up and all the three contacts are going to operate the next component is the bus bar so what is a bus bar a bus bar is a conductor used for collecting power so every substation will have incoming lines and outgoing lines so we have to make connections of this incoming and outgoing lines so bus bar basically provides an electrical junction for outgoing and ingoing out incoming current path so there are different types of bus bar connections depending upon the type of reliability required this is a symbol of a bus bar we show by a single thick line so this is how a bus bar can you see the bus bar here so this figure represents a bus bar so from here connections can be taken out so on insulators this bus bar has been mounted so we have ring bus double bus single bus so different bus bar systems can be adopted depending upon the level of reliability required another important component are the instrument transformer so what is the purpose of instrument transformers the instrument transformer transfer the value of voltage and current to a convenient value for measurement purpose high voltage and very high current cannot be measured directly do we have instruments to measure such high voltages directly by measuring instruments no so what we need to do is we have to transfer step down the voltage and current to a level which can be safely handled by measuring instruments as well as for protective relaying so in for protection purpose also instruments are transformer play a role there are two type of instrument transformers that is current transformer which we commonly call as ct and we have potential transformer which we call it as pt so here we have see how a ct looks like and here is how a pt looks like so cts and pts are used for measuring and protective relaying let us now learn little more about a ct a current transformer ct is basically a step up transformer it steps up the voltage but steps down the current to a known ratio the primary consists of one or more turns of thick wire and is connected in series with the line so see here this is the primary every transformer will have two windings so this is going to form your primary and this is going to form your secondary and across the secondary at these terminals you are going to connect the measuring instruments the primary is connected in series with the load and is made up of thick wire a pt is basically a, it steps down the voltage it primary consists of a large number of turns here we had one or more turns here we have large number of turns here we had thick wire here we have fine wire 
and the secondary winding has few turns right and it is used to connect the voltmeter so here we have a graphical representation of pt here we have graphical representation of a ctm both these symbols will find in the layout diagram the next component is the lightning arrestor so we know that lightning provides a very high voltage which may damage the equipments so a lightning arrestor is a protective device it is used in power system as well as te telecommunication system what the purpose of providing lightning arrestor it is to protect the apparatus from high voltage lightning surges so what does the lightning arrestor do they will transfer the high voltage surges to the ground or to the earth so there will be no damage to the equipment so different type of lightning arrestors are use rod gap horn gap expulsion type or valve type so different types of arrestors are used depending upon where they are to be installed so we have a different symbols for lightning arrestors based upon which type we are using so here i have shown you three different symbols so lightning the horn gap arrestor picture is shown here the expulsion type i have shown here so different type of lightning arrestor have a different look and they are provided work on different operating principle but they all perform the function of protecting devices next we have protective relays so what do the relay do they are basically sensing devices so the purpose of providing relays is to sense the fault find out the position of fault and give a command to the circuit breaker to interrupt or trip so the circuit breaker will isolate the circuit from the fault so the circuit breaker will disconnect but who will give the command for the circuit breaker to disconnect it will be the relays so there are different type of relays depending upon where they are provided and for the different type of circuit so here i have showed you the earth fault relay a protecting system is provided indoors usually and they work towards protecting the equipments in case of faults the next component is the insulator it is an important part of a substation they are not shown directly in the layout diagram but the purpose of the insulator is to support the conductors is to support the conductors so that current there will be no leakage current and confine the current to the conductor itself they are generally made up of porcelain and different type of insulators are provided at different places so as you travel you just have a look at the tower transmission towers or the poles and all these insulators will be commonly seen by you so these are the different type of insulators we have suspension insulator we have string insulator we have post insulator this is called the post insulator stay insulator so all these insulators are used for different different purposes and they are available at different voltages but the entire purpose of providing insulator is to support the conductors and also help to create a clearance we have already studied the different components of a substation now we are going to put all these components together to create a substation and draw a line diagram so in this line diagram what do you see we can see that there are two incoming lines these are the two bus bars the incoming lines are connected through a isolator and a circuit breaker and again you have an isolator here double break isolator here we have a pt 
here we have an earthing switch the purpose of the earthing switch basically the switch after the operation before you carry out any maintenance and repair all the components need to be earthed the purpose of providing the switches is to discharge all the static charges to the earth so here we have an earthing switch we have circuit breaker we have isolator here we have a double bus bar system why do we say double bus bar system because we have a main bus and a transfer bus so incoming line can transfer power to any of the bus so here we have a pt here we can see that there are outgoing lines so outgoing lines can be directly sent or we can transform the voltage here we have a transformer which transfers the voltage transform the voltage from 66 kv to 11 kv and this 11 kv will go and charge a bus bar from the bus bar we have got outgoing lines 1 2 and 3 lines here we have a lightning arrester this is a ct the ratio 200 is to 1 so this single line diagram what does it represent it represents the electrical connection we will see it in detail in the next slide so here the line diagram is going to have 266 kv incoming line which you are going to call as incoming 1 and incoming 2 so this arrangement is called as a double circuit the both the lines can be loaded together to share the load of the substation but if one line breaks then the continuity can be maintained from the other one so here we can see a 66 kv incoming line it comes and charges the bus bar this system has got a double bus bar system so what happens is that the 66 kv line we are going to step it down to 11 kv this is done by two units of three phase transformer so we can see in the line diagram that we have two transformers one and two so each transformer is separately providing uh, power to a separate bus bar this transformer is supplying to the bus bar on the left while this transformer is supplying power to the right so here we can have a standby unit so in a 66 kv by 11 kv substation we have a transformer which is going to step down the voltage but whatever power received can be directly sent to the industrial customer also so we can see one line separately going we have second line directly going and one line we transfer it to 11 kv and then supply it so we have three outgoing circuits from here and three outgoing circuits from here so we have a, also have a bus coupler that is to shift power from one bus to another bus we see that both the incoming and outgoing lines are connected through circuit breakers and isolators we have every line you can see there is a circuit breaker and that is an isolator isolator circuit breaker isolator every line has got isolator and circuit breaker all the incoming and outgoing lines both you will find that for every circuit breaker you have two isolators at either end we have cts and pts here we have a pt here we have a ct so every line has got a ct and pt for metering as well as for protective relaying lightning arresters have been provided at near the transformer to protect them from lightning strokes let us have a quick revision of all the concepts learned by answering mcqs the first question is isolators are used to disconnect the circuit when a line is on full load 
line is energized, circuit breaker is not open or there is no current in the line. We know that isolators are also called as no load switches or disconnecting switches. They disconnect when there is no current in the line. So answer is going to be B. There is no current in the line. The next question is, which device automatically interrupts the supply in the event of surges or fault? So we have earthing switch, we have series reactor, we have isolator and circuit breaker. I told you earthing switch also is basically a mechanical switch and after the interruption of current, we use it to discharge the static charges to earth. An isolator is a no load switch. So the answer is going to be circuit breaker. Huh? Answer is D. The next question is, current rating is not necessary in the case of First option is isolator, circuit breaker, load brake switch, circuit breaker and load brake switch. We know that isolator is a no load switch, no current is going to flow. So do we need a current rating? A current rating is not required either to make or to break. So isolators do not have any current rating. Answer is A, isolators. The next question is, a component that connects incoming and outgoing electric lines are called bus bars, isolators, insulators and circuit breakers. So all the incoming and outgoing lines are connected to the bus bar. So what is the answer? Answer is A, bus bar. The next question is the insulator serves the purpose of Supporting the conductor. Yes, insulators do support the conductor. Confine the current to the conductor. Provide clearance from the ground. All the above. So, what is the answer? The insulator does all these functions. So, the answer will be D, all of the above. Instrument transformers are used for measurement and protection purpose in substations are current transformer, potential transformer, power transformer and both A and B. So power transformer cannot use for protection purpose, cannot be used for measurement purpose. So current transformer and potential transformer, there are two type of instrument transformer. So answer is going to be D, both A and B. Dash are used to disconnect the live system for maintenance and repair purpose. So what is the choice? Insulator, isolator, bus bars and you have all the above. So bus bars is not possible, insulators is not possible. So it is isolators. So the answer is going to be B, isolators. I would like you to share the names of textbooks which we have used for the creation of this content and also all the links which we have used. I request you all to go through this for better understanding.